All right. Um, this is the this is a meeting about uh, discussing what's going to happen with the signing service. Um, and David, thanks for joining us. Uh, I just clicked the record button, and uh, the agenda link is here. I'll put it into this chat. Uh, um, and if you, if you wouldn't mind putting your name around line 13, 14, um, just to have a group of folks who were here. Um, and with that, I think we can get right into the content. Um, there's, I had prepared this agenda, it's not changed since then, but um, we can have more proposals and discussion. Feel free to, to put more stuff onto here. So the first topic um, has to do with a discussion that we were having on the mailing list around formally adding public key to the signing service. Um, my interest is to try to pick up the conversation and reach a conclusion together, either for or against. Um, I mean, it's not necessarily a hard decision that we need to arrive at. Everything can be rethought with new information. Um, but uh, I wanted to try to move it forward somehow. So um, do are folks familiar with that thread and kind of the things that have been discussed in it? If not, we can go back over the proposal um, quickly, no problem. Well, actually, maybe we should just go back over the proposal either way. Yeah. Because, I mean, uh, people can read different things, and this will just help get us all level set on the same page. So right now, um, I should pull up the, uh, the model for signing service. Let me do that. Um, uh, so the signing service uh, is here. Here's a link to it. Um, I'll put this uh, link into the doc and then here into the chat as well. So the signing service model currently has a name and a script, and that is all. And the idea is that the, res the return value from the script gives you the contents of the public key. Am I understanding the state of things correctly? Well, let me just add that I guess it's up to the child class to define exactly what the script must return. Oh, yes, because this is an inherited model. Exactly. So like in the the main one, or the, I guess the de facto reference one, which is the ASCII armor detached signing service, because that's the only one that's in pulp core. Yep. Um, that one has a validate function that ensures that the script does return, I think, amongst other things, a path to the public key file. It does. It has this file signature key um, triplet. And here's a link to the doc string, which contains an example of that. Exactly. Yeah. So, so but yeah. The, but uh, I guess the, the thing I meant to say was, yeah, it's really up to the child class to decide what the interface for the individual signing service implementation is. And that yeah. means that the current implementation of the base class isn't even confined to signing service. It's just a run this script with a file name service. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, we should ask ourselves if that's a feature or if we want to be more specific there already. I think that's the question of whether we want to add a specific public key to a specific signing service. Yes. Um, so I long for a more concrete uh, interface. And so I do not see that as a feature. Um, signing, signing services with signatures involve 
PKI, and there's when you're signing something, it always involves the public key. So to me, um, that would be a, it would be better for us to uh, have that in the base model. But that would limit us also to a specific PKI. So if we say the public key is on a GPG key, then that's signing service class can only work with GPG. I'd imagine that it would would um, be a a text field, okay. not necessarily saying GPG. I can't really imagine other examples. Perhaps I just don't know enough about these things. Well, you could say it's a GPG key ID. Yeah, you could. And I was imagining calling it just public key. There are other implementations, actually I'm remembering this now, there are other implementations, um, but they are just that, they're implementations. Um, so they still, they, they wouldn't be GPG, because actually there are other ones, but um, there would still be public keys involved. Um, I, I want to throw out some are there other comments on that? Or what are some thoughts on that? What are your thoughts? Um, maybe I just say one thing because I actually added the question to the agenda document. So um, I'm kind of neutral on having a public key field in there. Maybe it's better because it's a bit more clearly specified what what is a signing service um, but i was thinking is it a valid use case to like create a signing service with more than one key that adds multiple signatures it's just a thought i had maybe it's completely stupid <laughs> so that would be a, then a list of public keys i guess so yeah i added it in there just to throw the question into the room I don't think it's completely stupid at all. I just don't have a good use case for it. I mean, I think multiple public keys implies multiple independence entities. Um, and you're extending trust, like if you have two public keys, you're extending trust to, to two different entities. Um, you know, if, go ahead. Yeah, I don't know. But then again, is there a use case where people want to sign their metadata with more than one key for some whatever reason? Is it possible to sign with two keys in the same file? You you can through a, what's called a clear sign, um, where the um, signature is attached at the end, and you could continue attaching more of them, I believe. That would be possible by calling the different signing services one after another. Well, that's the, that's what I was going to say. Is you you could also accomplish this through calling the same signing service one after the other, and I think it avoids some of the complexity of well the problem of am I signing their signature like a double wrapped signature versus I'm signing the original asset twice. Okay. Yeah, so maybe that I, I put it in there, but maybe it's actually just takes us off track. So we should leave it at that. And if it ever becomes an issue, we'll fix it then. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I wanted to share uh, two, um, two kind of like motivating concerns about this issue. So recently, a user named Leader um, added uh, to RPM the ability for the repo file that's a repo file generation. And uh, his, uh, they have a, leader has a practical problem on his hands um, because until you actually sign something, you don't get the key. Mm -hmm. Even though it's included in the ASCII armor detached signing service return call, 
And so what he was doing, um, they, I'm not good with pronouns, um, was signing dummy data. Like that's the workaround. And right now that's what it does. And so one of the motivating, one of the motivations for this change is a practical one where you might want, you, you want to know that upfront. Um, so that's something to think about. Uh, I want to put another thing out there for us to think about and then try to see if, the, if this, um, see what you all think. So mm, what, I th what I keep wondering about is key rotation. Um, and what are the implications when the public key changes? Um, and the, uh, the signing service, like for example, the ASCII armored signing service that's created in the database, um, you know, if we add the public key to it, it will have to change. Um, or but replaced, or it needs to be replaced. And so, what I want to do is kind of paint a picture around who are all the entities that are involved in this asset. Um, there's the administrator who configures the script. There's the uh, there's the user of pulp, and that's probably a different person. Um, that user of pulp, I kind of call them the content administrator, just for the purposes of this discussion. And uh, they are involved because they end up having to trigger a republish event at the very least, because it's that publish time where the signing tends to occur. And so I'm calling out their role as, as needing to know that something changed and to their action would be to cause a, a republish event typically. And then there's the end client, the client themselves. And there are many of them. And so um, if we end up what we have today implicitly allows key changing to occur. And one of the reasons why, why would keys change? One of the reasons keys change is because they expire. Um, keys should have expiration dates. It shouldn't be super duper long, probably on the small number of years and time passes and they'll need to be changed. Um, and so uh, will this happen? I think it will. Um, and when it happens, Right now, what would happen is the script would end up just getting the other, maybe the script would change, I don't know, but for sure the return value would change. And uh, implicitly, this is the implicit part, the next publish will just switch to them, at which point clients will break. Um, because if no one tells them to rotate their keys, to start trusting the new, the new um, signing authority, then they'll see those new signatures as not cryptographically trusted. And maybe this is a good situation. I mean, I mean, stuff breaking isn't good, but um, the fact that the administrator can make their changes, their, their needed changes, and the content administrator can just trigger another publish whenever that happens and stuff just works. Like that's actually a pretty good situation, I think. Or maybe it's not a good situation. And this is where I really, <laughs> really look for, for help in this because maybe it's not a good situation because perhaps, um, there sh perhaps this shouldn't pass silently or implicitly. Um, perhaps it should pass loudly and with multiple parties involved. And so, the, so, so that would be the case for you have this, the public key in the signing service. So you have to create a new signing service with a new name or something like that. That would be loud. That would be loud. Yeah. Okay. And then you switch your publisher to use the new one. Or yeah. Your... And you have to take an action. And and um, right now, administrators kind of create the signing services, is and then 
content administrators use them. And so part of the question is not only would we add the public key to the data model, but would we make it immutable? And what's the, what do we want to do with that? That's kind of, um, I think we need to make it immutable if we add the public key because for the publication of this RPM that needs to provide the public key without signing anything new on an old publication. If you change the signing service to the new key, that will break. So that publication must always point to the old signing service. That might be disabled by deleting the script because the key is uh, uh, out of date. Or deleting the signing service. Then you would break the publication that is old. Yeah, that's okay, I see. But so you didn't mean script. Right? Reactivate the script and then the signing service would still be able to provide the public key to serve that old publication. But not yep. be able to create a new one. Hmm. And so I think having immutable signing services is a good thing. Because they're associated with existing publications. Yeah. Well, also, I mean, I agree with that. Um, yeah, I definitely agree with that. And the content administrator has to take an API action. And this is going to cause them to have to take an action, but I think it's going to put them in the, to give them the realization to actually go out and fix their clients. And that's my one main concern. That's my kind of my overarching concern is that no one, if no one's responsible for fixing the clients, there's, you can change keys all day and it's not going to matter. But it's not going to be pleasant. It's going to yeah. matter. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is going to matter. Um, yeah, it'll, everyone will break. It. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, any other thoughts? I, I agree. So, I mean, are there thoughts in the other direction or things that we haven't considered? I guess I'm plus one for making it, for adding the key explicitly and then also making it immutable in the same thing. And that answers some of my other questions, which I tucked onto the end of the agenda about, do we need to look one more time about how our signing service is created and changed or do they need to be changed? If we make them immutable, that answers the change question. They just don't change ever. <laughs> they yeah, just right. You just create new ones. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, I'm trying to take some notes here. Um, David, feel free to jump in if you have any um, thing that you feel like we really should consider. Um, there, there's maybe one more thing. Um, at the moment, we hard code the key ID into the scripts. So that makes the scripts very not uh, reusable. When we have the key ID on the signing service object, we could pass it to the script. And that way we could provide scripts from packages that can be used for certain plugins. So you mean the, the example script in the documentation? Or which yeah. script exactly are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, and I've heard this goal before too. Um, and we should write this into here. Um, as, can we like make this like a middle term proposal? Um, not that you're necessarily calling it as such, but um, like a full proposal, but um, how to provide um, more usable scripts. That's a question, not a proposal. And <laughs> of the key field to the signing service, there's no reason to not have the key ID available too, I think. 
like in a uh your oh oh you're saying having the key id in the database in the database as well. well let's say some key reference that is specific to the pki and that is passed to the script yeah I can see, yeah, I mean, I can see the value in that. How, how does that work today? I mean, is it just happening in the subclass in the ASCII armored one? I think we have the key ID hard coded in the script. There's a, uh, if you follow the link, I added the link to the workflow documentation. I think it has the script in there at the bottom of the uh, agenda document, the last link in it. Yeah, let me pull this up. Yeah, that has an example script and it has. Oh, and yeah, I see what you're saying. And Matthias, what you're saying is that because it's hard coded in the script, we can't ship a generic version. Ah, yes. Um, okay, all right. Well, I'm going to try to do a little bit of note taking here. Um, I managed to mess this all up. Yeah, I feel like the background that you're telling us is that, um, well, it's really a problem statement. Uh, currently, the key ID is expected to be hard coded. that for a problem statement. Yeah, I agree. OK, so um, I think what there's a, there's a proposal here. I mean, I feel like I heard one, um, which is to add key ID, uh, add key ID yeah. to the base to the base model. What's that thing called? Signing service. Just signing service, yeah. And do you think that would be an optional, an optional field? Um, well, if we do, if we make the public key a non-optional field, then there's no reason to have that optional. Um, so the use case that I'm thinking about, um, there tend to be kind of two ways that I understand that people use these things, like in terms of the two kinds of scripts. One is the common one that most people use, and that's GPG based with a local key ring. And this field, I think, is, a, is makes good sense for that use case because the key ring is your GPG is, is a reference to your GPG key ring entry. Um, and so when you configure it, the generic script will receive it. Everything works great. Okay. The other one though, that is a situation where there's an external signing service and it's something like, um, typically there's a physically isolated key signing server or service and you interact with it over networks or messages or something like that. And I send the message as a request for signing, and then it sends me back a response. That's the, the signed thing. Um, it probably wouldn't have a notion of this key ID. Um, if the signing service contains more than one key, I need to choose one. 
Um, well, uh, I can still ignore it. So tell me that once more, sorry. And if it doesn't accept uh, such a parameter, the script can still just ignore it. That's right. I agree. But what would the administrator configure it as if it's a required field? That's yeah. the part that I'm stumped on. Um, as the same ID of the key that is saved in the other field. Always. In this case, I don't think there would actually be a GPG keyring. Yeah, but we are talking about the um, public key field and the sign field. And there will always be a public key. So yes, there will be. Verify it. And that public key will always have an ID. And that's the ID to put there. So, OK, so you're saying, yeah, so may, yeah, OK, I hear what you're saying. So what I think you're telling me is that every public key has a well has a well known ID with it. And part of what I was imagining was different than that. Um, I imagine that it was the GPG key ring entry. And so part of my question is, are these one and the same? And maybe what is what? Um, what did you imagine would actually be like the, an example value of something like that? Uh, I think eight letters of hex. And the cool. Of, which yeah, is, which can be used in the same place as you well, when signing with GPG, you can specify the ID in very different ways. And that is one of them. Yep, I agree. Or you can even, uh, use the whole fingerprint. Yeah, I agree. And that's how you refer to it in your GPG key ring, for example. Yeah. And the key ID is just the last eight letters of the fingerprint. Yep. Um, that sounds OK to me. Um, and if we end up in a situation where it needs to be optional, we can do we can we can fix that later. Mm -hmm. um, I mean that's a that's a schema altered on a database migration. Like that's not hard. Making a few optional is easier than the other way. <laughs> Definitely. So so I'm not too concerned about that. Um, it seems like so. Then let me ask you this question: Do you think that we would have that derived, or is that something that the administrator would set? I guess my other now that I'm over my other concern, my new concern is making it harder for them to set it incorrectly. To, yeah, yeah. I mean, like it's another it's another knife for an administrator to cut themselves with. At some point, this would be in the uh, subclasses that deal with GPG, obviously. Um, oh, not the base model. Yeah. The well, subclass the verify have function but, would have to verify. But the derived models must fill the field. And the derived model that deals with um, GPG keys will get the GPG key for the other field, and that can derive the key ID from there. So are you proposing that we add it to the base model or no? The field, yes. The, 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 way the implementation that, for setting it, no. Yes. OK. OK. Um, Which is basically what we, even in the two very simple fields we have right now, that's what we're doing, right? There's a field there for a script, and it's the child class that actually checks whether this is anything like a script. Yeah. So you're saying at, at validation time, um, which is when you create yeah. the signing service. Definitely. I yeah. agree. And the validation so, should check the key, that check that the signature matches the key and that the key is the has the right ID. Okay, cool. All right, that sounds good. I think I was getting a feel of the word derive, because to me that the, I was thinking that the code would actually be computing it. But what but what but I think what I'm hearing is that it's actually a validation that will happen. And that sounds good. Well, at some point, you have the key, and you can call out to GPG to give you the ID for it. See, that's more than a validation then at that point. That's actually, 
which so sounds it, it could be done at safe yeah yeah um okay all this sounds all this seems valuable to me and i can i understand why we would want to do it and it seemed and i'm comfortable with all this can you just wrap up like just summarize what the actual proposed change would be is it is it is it as simple as what's written here on line 49 I think I'll add a line there. Cool, yeah. Make the non-optional explicit, I guess. Yeah. And while you're doing that, I'm going to go back and just do a little bit of homework back on line 35 and 38. Let me see what you've written here. Okay, yeah, this sounds good. And uh, what sort of a field type did you imagine this to be? Maybe that's like super not Probably important. Probably text long enough for each PKI that will ever exist. So like text like text field, not a card because text fields have no limit. Or oh, okay, then character field, I think. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Okay. I won't ask you about the length. Um <laughs> so uh cool. This sounds good to me. I think overall what's going to happen, or I guess as a next step that I'll propose, and we're going to go to the third section here in a minute, but um, that we should post these notes publicly and just ask for comment and concerns and then give it some time to make sure people have enough time to really think it over and let us know how they feel. I'm really interested to see what Misha says. Um, I that we pass this to the script. Yes, please do. Yeah, great. Yeah, I really want to hear what Misha has to say about all this because uh, the implicit nature of the current design was heavily built by mm -hmm. by his beliefs and his implementation. And so I want to make sure that we are hearing from him to understand, I mean, like, is even if he does, best way to make it if this is still thanks for joining us david if this is still um even acceptable because like they in practice they use key signing a lot so like i need to make sure that this is it's still going to work even if it's not ideal um okay so um uh that sounds good. 
And then I think in this proposal, we want to say, uh, then we can package the script. Um, uh, yeah, ship the script generically as a um, as a setup tools asset. Is I think the way to say it. We should say that it's not necessary to use that script. So. Um, How's that look? Yeah. Okay. Um, great. Uh, time check. We have fifteen minutes, and let's move on to our third section, um, which is it has to do with the checksumming of the script itself, um, which provides the immutability of the whole block. It does. It does. Um, I read on the PR that adds. So what the PR did was it adds a checksum to the model, and I think it was adding it to the base signing service because there's a path to the script there. So it makes sense. I mean, if we are going to add it, it makes sense that it would be there. I see all the heads nodding. Great. So. Um, the concern that I saw on the PR was that uh, if the mechanism of of if the if the checksum doesn't match, that it was a warning. And the concern, I mean, just to say it plainly, was that it didn't go far enough. Um, and. What do you all think about that? Let's just let's just let me stop there and ask you guys your opinions on this. You're muted, Kieran. Right. Um, the way I understood it, there were two concerns coming from opposite directions. So the one concern was, uh, if if you're if this is all going to be a totally immutable thing, once the script changes on disk, we're just going to throw an error and say this is not allowed. Yeah, uh, and mm -hmm. the other faction, I guess, was saying that there are legitimate reasons that the script might change on disk. Um, because I don't know. Because we package it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So so there, I guess that's the gist of it. There there be legitimate reasons that the script might change on disks, maybe people would even need slightly different versions of the script on different workers, which is also a thing we currently have. I guess we need the script to be available on every worker. Yep. Um, um, go ahead. The yep. main idea that infused the checksum thing, to be sure, if I configure the signing service on one worker, that it will be the same service running on all of the workers. Exactly. So. OK, so th there was the sort of counter concern that there might be legitimate reasons to change the script, and therefore you don't want it to be a hard error. And I guess the warning is kind of like the bad compromise in between, where right. it, add, it adds only relatively little value, because if for the person who really wants the error, like uh, they're going to run into some kind of problems and then have the benefit of being able to see in the log that there was a warning all along. And now they might it might help them analyze the problem, but really later than they would have liked. Yeah, like a post-mortem. And, <laughs> and, and I guess for the people who want to have the ability to sort of change the script on disk without touching the signing service uh, for whatever legitimate reasons, they're going to have an annoying warning in, in their logs all the time that they're just going to ignore forever. Um, yep. Which is, I mean, which it's a warning, so that's not terrible, I don't think. Um, people ignore warnings all the time. Agreed. <laughs> but, I, but I feel like if we go, if we, if we address the concern that it doesn't go far enough, 
then that warning would become like a, a cannot use kind of a problem. Yeah. And so, like you said, or I think you said, it's the bad compromise in between, right? It makes no party actually happy. <laughs> yeah. I think um, so. So my my immediate sort of or so one thought I have is that uh, the warning, yeah, it is kind of a bad compromise between these two different, I guess, use case Im imagined use cases. Um, but it still like if if we can't find a compromise between or if we can't agree which of the use cases is actually correct, one could still add the warning and it doesn't really hurt and it might add some benefit in analyzing your problem when things goes wrong. Um, yeah, but, but it yes, raise a red light on all the cases where it was legitimate to change the script. Just the script. Yeah, and and yeah, like for example, um, and I, and I don't know what's right, so I'm I'm not even I have no like particular outcome I'm looking for here. Um, it would be an unfortunate outcome if a change to the script is made. And I think that's also pretty likely because if it's an asset that we're shipping, like things change. And then it it starts emitting warnings for everything that was made prior to it. I have another solution to the whole problem. Great. If it's OK to save the script as an artifact and therefore maybe make it available for people to see it, then we could just reference an artifact in the signing service that is immutable by nature. That will not be overwritten by any um, package updates. And it will be the same on all workers. I mean, that's certainly good from, I think one of the actually most realistic, like real world pain points that the current approach is gonna have is people who don't realize they need to do things on all of their workers and then just run into problems, right? I could, I can certainly imagine uh, the system administrator from the parties you've described, like trying to change this script and forgetting that he needs to do so on all workers. And then you get some inconsistent, weird, difficult to diagnose effects happening. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. And, and actually, let me bring another concern to the table. I'm just realizing this now. See, in my brain, I always think I have this assumption that, oh, Varla Pulp, that's the shared place. Just put it in there, no problem. Um, but actually, that's not even true anymore. Um, pulp has a set of users for Pulp 3 that uh, cannot have shared storage. They literally can't. And uh, so, how does so how does Pulp even work? Well, Pulp they use um, their artifact artifact storage is backed by S3 or Azure, and they only use whatever is Varlib Pulp for their temporary storage. It's just a temporary place for like sync data to be stored in, and then it's written to S3. And the the artifact containing the script must be downloaded to the local storage and then called. Yeah, I agree. So I see uh, the only downside I see is that it's an artifact and people can start seeing and using it in different contexts, which should be okay for all the generic ones, but not okay if you're using if you're having any access parts to your local signing service or not. Well, yeah, I mean, I definitely think there's a sensitivity around that asset. Um, it, uh, it shouldn't be, <laughs> but it is a sensitive thing. Um, you can always it's... call another script from that script, and then you completely circumvent the, I cannot change it. I was also thinking about that. Yeah. And then I don't know with with sensitivity and things like is it is anything we're going to do really worse than it's lying around on disk anyway? Yeah, being an artifact it can be served by the Okay, yeah. App, yeah, and that's my concern as well. 
Although we could put it in another place. I mean, we really could. We could just have another part of our file system that stores it and we could make sure that it's backed by a, a um, Django storages compatible like data store. Yeah, or yeah, something, I mean, something like that. Um, so let me just round up the concerns. The concerns are that, um, or maybe my concern is that what we currently have is not going to work for a segment of our pulp users because they don't have shared storage. Um, and if they do have shared storage, they might not be putting it there or, or in all cases, we're not, we're concerned that the same script isn't going to be in all the right places. We should write. I think that's down. a, that's certainly an operational concern. Yeah. I think that's a very realistic. Right. Right. Places. Um, the other right. <laughs> Did I mention English is my first language? Um, so let's see. Uh, when users don't have shared storage, um, putting the script uh, on all workers is practically difficult. Um, what are the other concerns? I mean, what, well, let's go back to the original concern that started this PR to start with. Someone was worried about, was it tampering? I, no, it wasn't. The I think the original concern was mainly uh, you deploy it to some of your workers but not others, and then you have an inconsistent system state where weird effects happen. Okay, so that's that's kind of this first concern on line sixty six. So so yeah. So and like the 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 checksum solution. Well, that at least gives you a warning or error when when that happens. Okay. Because if, if any if any of your scripts are, don't have the right thing, you'll get the warning or the error, whatever, whatever, whichever it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I put two more down here. Um, and I'll, I'll put another one. If, uh, in an artifact, it's maybe too, uh, yeah. Too accessible, not the right word. Yeah. So yeah, one solution would be to place it in an artifact, but then maybe that's too accessible. That's, I guess, the. I didn't help you out at all, Matthias. Sorry about that. <laughs> But I think that's a documentation thing. If you say this is this must be non-sensitive information, work the way around it. Yes, and I mean, as the system administrator who has some sensitive information in there somewhere, you you have every option to like call another script from the script or. Yeah, and yeah, that yeah. You need to deploy it to all your workers manually anyway. Yeah. Or by another method, let's say. So I, so I guess I could say that my personal favorite is almost the artifact solution, but I don't know if that works for everyone. <laughs> it solves a lot of problems, and then yeah. and and then you just need to make clear to people that this script is not meant to contain secrets. Yeah. Yeah. And if you ship the version as an example, you can always, well, I imagine if you save it, you provided a file and the file gets turned into an artifact. And so you can even ship the file and use that file to be turned into an artifact. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 
The I think that the concern that I keep thinking about, which isn't written down here, but um, but it, it really falls if it, it falls under the, um, concern number two, uh, that users without shared storage will have a practical terrible time. Um, and the the issue is that it's not only about the script. The script ultimately is a shim. It's a thing that calls another file system asset, and that other typically, and that other file system asset, like okay, great, yeah, now we've made the script in the artifact as an artifact, but the GPG keyring itself cannot be an artifact, and yes. so they the still have that. Key, the secret key cannot be in pulp, <laughs> and so so they they literally still have the same problem. Only now we've we've added more steps, um, and I don't exactly know what to do about that. Also, I'll point out that we are at our time. Um, okay. And so um, I will send these notes out to the list. Um, I will try to also ping Misha for comment. And I think we have no decision on, on this third part. Um, and maybe we'll discuss it some more on the thread, or maybe we'll reconvene another meeting in two weeks. Um, should we add the, the third question with um, this, with any of those solutions is depending on whether we make it immutable. If we don't make it immutable, then there's no uh, way of, yeah. Then, then there's no use for the checksum. Yeah, I think that we are, I mean, yeah, I mean, feel free to write it. I'm not sure how to make that clear. I'm not sure how to make that clear in the document. Well, you could you could have a mutable script with a well-defined way for uh, a mutable signing service, sorry, with a well-defined way for updating it and then recalculate the checksum whenever you do. And then still have the checksum to provide a warning in like right. where with against right. accidental changes. Well, yeah, and, and yeah. yeah, the changing of the script underneath. I think that's really exactly. the, the thing. Yeah, so um, what you're saying is if you change the script underneath, you need to revalidate and save the signing service. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. um, I will not add that note. All right. Well, uh, thank you both for your time so much, <laughs> um, and David for joining earlier. And um, I'm going to post this onto our YouTube channel. I'm not sure who will watch it, but um, are you both comfortable with that? OK. <laughs> OK. Um, I'll send these uh, notes out, and we'll discuss it some on the mailing list. And we probably will come and talk again here in, the, in another two weeks. And now just as for a smaller, easier discussion. Let's try to take the things that we did um, propose and think are good ideas, and let's try to put those into action with comment. Yeah. So I'll take the next step. Thank you both for your time. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. See you.